In otolaryngology, we take care of folks with airway problems. And it may not be that intuitive initially, right? People who can't breathe or their nose gets irritated, that's one thing, that's its own problem. But you can imagine that it's all the same system. So the things that irritate your nose or your throat also may promote irritation in the ear. The lining of the nose and ear particularly have a certain type of clearing mechanism that is very vulnerable in terms of its response to outside irritants, such as tobacco smoke, secondhand smoke, and profound exposures such as the environmental challenges we're facing today with the smoke that's in the air. You're more likely to get the sense of congestion, thick mucus, and we're concerned that also will promote inflammation that will lead to infection. People might have uh, hoarseness, they might have a dry or itchy throat, pain in the throat, but more commonly we're hearing complaints about nasal congestion and we expect to see an increase in the incidence of ear infections or irritation in the middle ear over the next few weeks. Stay indoors. I realize not everyone has the freedom and capacity to do it in the way they want to, but that's important. If you are going outdoors, limit your exposure. And the particular attention should probably be paid to folks, our children, our, our, our elderly, to really be aware of folks with pre-existing conditions that are affecting the ear, nose, and throat. While most of us enjoy having carbonated beverage or an alcoholic drink or certainly a cup of coffee, uh, those things are fine in moderation. And some of us who are a little more susceptible, if you're looking for a balance, if you feel like your throat is getting irritated during this time, maybe a little more water, maybe avoid the irritants for a couple days, such as the ones we talked about. In my own practice, we've had a definite uptick in calls from our patients, concerned, maybe they want to move up their appointments, maybe they want to cancel their appointments because they don't want to go out, but there has been something, uh, this has definitely affected people. But even after the smoke comes and goes, I wonder if there will be people who find that they have persistent symptoms, that it wasn't necessarily just a lingering effect of the smoke, but rather this experience unearthed a problem that was already brewing. So if you do have things that aren't quite right, even when the air is clear, nasal congestion, pain, difficulty breathing, sore throat, I think it's a good time to connect with your primary care physician or an ear, nose, and throat doctor just to reach out and say, hey, you know, I know this happened to everybody, but I still am not quite right. Could I have something else going on?